What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So we are fully at like the quarter mark of the NHL season. A lot of teams, probably like a majority of teams, have played either 20 or 21 games, which obviously an 82-game season, you do the math. Quarter mark. So without further ado, I wanted to go through my current awards, who I would give the awards based on the first quarter of the season. This is not a projection based on how good they did, who I think is going to win at the end of the season. This is solely just looking at the first 20 or 21 games that a player has played in thus far who I would give the award if the season ended literally today so I'm going to give you my full ballot for the Hart, Norris, Vesna, Calder, Selkie, Adams, the big six just one through five all at once and we're going to discuss it up first is the Hart Trophy. Hart Trophy right now I have Nikita Kucherov winning it I don't think that that's that controversial of a take considering he has 15 goals 20 points 30 or 20 assists 35 points for a Tampa Bay Lightning team that we all thought was going to struggle out of the gate without Andre Vasilevsky obviously they're not like where they exactly want to be but they have stayed afloat mainly because of Nikita Kucherov he's absolutely killing it yes a lot of his production has been on the power play for the most part but he has been such an elite power play scorer the last couple years that I think it is kind of sustainable at this point I would expect him to go well north of 110 points and when you look at it leading the league in points right now, leading the league in goals right now. I think as that dominant forward, especially a guy that has won the heart in his past, right now he would be my pick. He's the clear-cut best player on his team. His team might not be the best team in the league, but I think he's been the most valuable player. At number two, we obviously have Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes is playing fantastic, 33 points. Amazing offensively, 33 points, 22 games. That's 123-point pace. As a goddamn defenseman, that would be like the most since obviously Paul Coffey back in the goddamn 80s. And when looking at him right now, he has a 75% goals percentage in all situations. That is fifth. That is first in the entire league among all defensemen that have played at least 250 minutes this season. His advanced stats aren't quite as good as his regular, but his regular obviously could have a 75% expected goals percentage. He's been great. His overall expected goals percentage, all situations in five on five is 59.5% which compared to when he's off the ice, it's only 46.7% for the Canucks. So in talking about how value, valuable his, he is, his relative expected goals percentage compared to the team is plus 12.8% pretty decent, especially on a Canucks team that is 14-7-1. He would maybe have Kucherov beat, but in my opinion, Kucherov is so clearly the best player on his team right now, the most valuable. You compare that to Quinn Hughes, Demko's also been great. Pedersen's been great. Miller's been great. So right now, I do have Nikita number one. Panarin, Panarin's playing great as well. 29 points in 19 games thus far. The next closest guy in the Rangers only has 20 he literally has double the amount of the fourth place on the Rangers right now. Mika Zubinijad not playing that good. He only has 14 points. So Panarin has been carrying that team offensively. It's something with Panarin that has really impressed me this season is he is shooting the puck a shit ton more. You look at it. This year, he has 76 shots on goal in just 19 games. Pretty easy math. That's four shots per game. Last year, he had 204 in 82 games, which is only 2.5 shots per goal shots on goal. So although he is scoring at a much elevated goal scoring rate, 11 goals in 19 games, that's around like 46, 47 goal pace. It's sustainable considering he is shooting so much. He's only shooting 14.5%, which is about what he shot last year. He's just shooting a shit ton more. So I'm looking at our Temi Panarin. He's been fantastic. Number four, David Pasternak. Also kind of carrying the Bruins offense. He has 31 points, 13 goals, 18 assists for 31 points. And when you look at it, the next guy up is Charlie Coyle at only 19 points. Last year, he had 111, 112. The second place guy in the Boston Bruins had like 70 points. It was Brad Marchand. So when looking at him, he is really carrying the load offensively on pace for 56 goals. He's been fantastic. Fifth, rounding us out in this heart ballot, Kale McCarr. He would be getting more love if Quinn Hughes also wasn't playing absolutely out of his mind. He has 30 points in 20 games. And similarly to Quinn Hughes, his all situations goals percentage right now, 71.2%. That's third in the entire league, only behind Quinn Hughes and I think one other guy. His total five on five expected goals percentage is 60%, which is fourth in the entire league, actually ahead of Quinn Hughes. He's killing it. Avalanche are doing very good themselves. He's a major reason why. Next up, we're moving over to the Vesna. Vesna Trophy, Thatcher Demko, right now the number one, a pretty easy number one. 
He's played 15 games. He has a 925, a 218, leading the entire league in goals saved above expected at 11.4. The next closest guy is only 9.4. Obviously, the Canucks have been very good. He has a 10 and 5 record. Pretty easily the Vesna winner right now. At number two, I got Cam Talbot, a ridiculous 931 save percentage and a 201 goals against. Out of nowhere, yes, the Kings are playing fantastic behind him, but he's also playing great in his own right. He has 8.4 goals saved above expected. The Kings are actually the NHL's leader right now, and expected goals percentage is pretty crazy, but he's been great as well. 14 games, 10 3 and 1 record. Third place, Aiden Hill, I wasn't really sure where to put Aiden Hill. He has played 12 out of the Golden Knights' 21 games. He's been fantastic. He has a 932, a 197, and 9.4 goals saved above expected, second in the entire league, only behind Thatcher Demko. Four and five, it gets a little bit interesting. I went with Jordan Binghamton. I went with him. He's carrying the Blues right now. The regular stats aren't that good for him. He only has a 908 and a 287, but he does have 6.1 goals saved above expected. He is their workhorse right now and keeping them afloat in that central division wild card race overall they have they're, they're pretty easily in a wild card spot at only like 57 points percentage he just has that workhorse role right now compared to maybe some other guys like a Jonathan Quick like a Swayman that have Jonathan Quick's only played eight games I didn't feel conf- confident in putting him putting a guy that has only played like 43 percent of his team starts on the Vesna ballot. Same thing goes for Tristan Jari. He's playing better than Bennington a little bit in terms of the fact that he has a 918 and a 244. His advanced stats are a little bit worse, but I went with Bennington and Jari over a quick, over a Swayman, just because they have both played 15 games. They're playing like 70, 75% of their team starts. When you compare that to a Jonathan Quick that's played eight out of his 19, he's been fantastic, or Swayman that's played, that started 10 out of his 20. I care about. V- volume getting those reps because obviously if you're a backup you're going to be well more well rested you might have more favorable matchups so I go with a guy like a Jordan Binghamton or a Tristan Jari that have been consistently night in and night out playing very high level hockey compared to maybe that guy that is playing 50% or 43% of his team starts and balling out I went with those two I'm probably going to get a shit ton of shit for it but let me know in the comments what do you think about it next up over to the Calder Calder right now I think it's not that controversial to have Connor Bedard winning it right now 10 goals, 7 assists, 17 points, 19 games. If he keeps that up, he's going to be scoring in the mid-70s and have around 42, 43 goals. That's a pretty easy Calder win. Unless he gets hurt for like 5, five 10, probably like 10 games at this point, he's probably going to win it. Luke Hughes and Pavel Minchikov are a pretty clear number two and number three for me. Luke Hughes has really stepped up on a pretty talented New Jersey team. He's already getting a lot of power play reps on that number one power play spot. He has 12 points in 19 games. Minchikov, 11 or 11 or 12, no, 12 points in 21 games for the Anaheim Ducks. They have both really flourished as elite offensive defensemen in their first year. Has really impressed me. Joseph Wall. Has come back down to earth a little bit for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Still has a 910, a 292, and 3.3 goal saved above expected. It's still for a rookie goaltender. It is pretty impressive what he's doing. He has 11 ga- He's played in 11 games thus far, kind of stealing that starting role from Ilya Samsonov. So I think you still need to respect what Joseph Wool has done. Because although he hasn't been a fantastic starting goalie, he's been a very serviceable one thus far. So I think he definitely deserves to be ahead of the other forwards that would be on your Calder ballot. Luke Evangelista has three goals, nine assists, and 19 games to the Nashville Predators. Just such a skilled and overall speedy winger for them. I really like his play style. I didn't go with Logan Cooley. His defensive numbers are pretty horrendous right now for the Arizona Coyotes. I know he has a shit ton of offensive talent. I've been slurping Logan Cooley. I love his game. I don't have him on it right now. And I also don't have Leo Carlson because he has missed five or six games for the Anaheim Ducks thus far. And I think that does kind of need to be factored in. If you're going to miss five games, you better be playing. Yes, he does have three, six goals, three assists in those 14 games instead of the 19 that he could have played. But when looking at that, I'm obviously going to factor that in compared to a guy like Evangelista that has been in there night and night, has three more points than a Leo Carlson. I go with Evangelista over Carlson. I would understand if you have Cooley or Carlson over Evangelista or even Wool. I think the top three is kind of set in stone. Bedard won. Minchikov, Hughes, flip-flop them back and forth. But I think overall, this Calder list makes a lot of sense. Next up, Norris. Obviously, the Norris 
if I had Quinn Hughes ahead of McCarr in the heart, I'm going to have Quinn Hughes winning the Norris right now. McCarr's also been fantastic. I'm not going to repeat my talking points when coming to those guys. It's pretty clearly a, a two-man race right now. I just want to go over that number three spot. Right now, I have Miro Heiskanen, which he's not having the amazing offensive season that he did last year, but I think he's been a lot better defensively this year. Last year, obviously, had mid-70s points, but his defensive numbers, they kind of... He wasn't horrible defensively, but they definitely kind of regressed a little bit. He seems to be back on his way right now among defensemen that have played at least 350 minutes, which there's 47 of them. I'm not making up something where like there's only five guys that qualify or me or Heisken and leads out of the 47 defensemen, basically top pairing defensemen. He leads all defensemen in expected goals percentage at 59%. And although, yes, only 12 points in 19 games, I think he is going to pick it up. But when you look at him, I think this year might be the best year for him in the sense that he's, he's going to score 60-plus points. He's that talented, as well as having that fantastic defense. He has a real case to be a Norris finalist right now. Number four, Roman Yossi also playing very good. 15 points in 20 games, which is a little bit slow compared to his offensive standards. But he's been very good defensively in terms of five-on-five -five play per 60 minutes. When he's on the ice, the Predators are only allowing 2.03 expected goals per 60. That is one of the best rates in the entire NHL. Predators as a whole have not been that good of a team. But the advanced analytics tell us that Roman Yossi... Compared to his Norris year where he was pretty below average defensively, he has found his defensive groove again. And when you partner that on top of that 15 points in 20 games, he's been very impressive. And then lastly, Dougie Hamilton. Dougie Hamilton has been arguably the best offensive defenseman, even strength-wise, in the entire league. The New Jersey Devils are scoring at a rate of 3.7 expected goals per 60 when he's out there, which is by far the most. The defense hasn't been fantastic. It hasn't been as bad as some of the other de Devils defensemen right now, but he is an offensive powerhouse. He has 16 points in 19 games. And mind you, not really a power play merchant as much like last year because Luke Hughes is cutting into some of his power play time. So if he was playing power play right now, getting those free power play points, he'd be well over a point per game. He's absolutely killing it. Moving on to the Jack Adams, though. Jack Adams, Peter Laviolette first. I think you got to have him that there because the Rangers obviously are in first place in the entire NHL, 15-3-1, playing fantastic. Utilizing Peter Laviolette's fantastic 1-3-1 one, one trap, the stylistic changes are so evident with that Rangers team. It's not like the Rangers kept Gallant and he's just playing great. They're just having a great start. They are fundamentally a different team this season. So I think you need to go with Laviolette similarly to a guy that's also on the list, Jim Montgomery. How he came in, revolutionized the Bruins. They ended up winning the President's Trophy historic season. I don't think the, I don't think the Rangers are going to be putting up 135 points or whatever. But right now, Laviolette's the guy. Rick Tockett. The underlying numbers on the Canucks tell us that they might not be the best team long term, but in terms of what Rick Tockett has done to motivate this group and obviously extract the best out of this group has been very impressive. I think you need to have him as a finalist right now. Todd McClellan mentioned it before. The Kings are absolutely cooking. They're leading the entire league in expected goals percentage at 57%. That's an insane number. They don't have the most high-end talent on that Kings team, but he puts them in a very good spot to win by balancing out the lineups, playing hard-nosed physical defensive hockey. I really like what he's done in LA this season. Montgomery's still maybe not as good as last year, which is obviously historic, but he's playing fan the Boston Bruins as a whole are playing fantastic after a lot of people thought that they are going to fall off, maybe even miss the playoffs. That is not the case. And then Derek Lalonde. Obviously, Detroit has been one of the pleasant surprises this year. Uh, Iserman deserves a lot of credit as well, but Lalonde also has utilized these players very effectively. A guy like Shane Gothis Bear has his defensive limits, but he's so gifted offensively, and you've seen a guy like Lalonde really untap that offensive potential. He has something like 16 points in 18 games. Other guys like Comfer has come in and been pretty effective players. So I think Lalonde has done a very good job as well. And lastly, our final award. I'm not going to dive into this one as much because like I could just recite expected goals plus minus shit like that. But right now I think the Selkie is kind of Alexander Barkov's to lose. He has that reputation as a previous Selkie winner. They're going to want to vote for him. He might be the next Patrice Bergeron at this point. Nico Heischer missing like 10 games definitely dampens this race a little bit because it is Barkov so easily right now. He's killing it defensively. Offensively, not the best season. He only has 17 points in 17 games, but he is that guy defensively. And just overall, right now, he's my pick. Carlson's been great. Stahl has been, his advanced stats are unreal. The only problem is he doesn't only play like 15 minutes compared to 
a Barkov that plays like 19-20 in, in defensive situations. Joel Erickson X has been great. Reinhardt's been great defensively as normal. But that's my Selkie ballot. Let's run through it one more time. Here's the Hart. Here's the Vesna. Here's the Calder. Here's the Norris. Here's the Adams. And here is the Selkie. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about these awards? And in the bio or description of this video, there is a Google form for you guys to fill out to give me your awards ballots. Just fill it out. Gives you a place for each guy. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. I got like 20 guys. You award the ballot for five guys. And I'm going to be making an Instagram post of that and reviewing your overall ballot, how it stacks up against mine. But let me know in the comments. What do you think about this video as a whole? And I'll be seeing you in the next one.